Welcome everyone to my talk here at the Virtual Service Mesh Con, Service Mesh Architecture Explained, Sidecar and Beyond. My name is Manuel Zapf. So just a very quick who am I? I said I'm Manuel Zapf. I'm working with containers. Um, I'm engaged there as the head of product open source. Uh, I'm a traffic maintainer for more than three years by now. And I'm also, since we released our service mesh offering mesh last year, I'm a mesh maintainer. But as this is just a lightning talk, let's quickly get to it. For understanding the talk, we need to quickly define what is a sidecar. In Kubernetes, a sidecar runs within the same pod as the app, so it's just right to it. Um, usually, the sidecar serves as a companion with its own job, its own duties, helping the, the actual app. But these companions are usually auto-injected by something called the controller, which is something we will now take a look at. In a typical architecture, and we will take it for the, for the scope of this talk, for a typical service mesh architecture utilizing the sidecar proxy design, we have the control plane running in the Kubernetes cluster. And this control plane will make sure that for every microservice deployed in the cluster, there is also a sidecar proxy available right next to it. So in case this microservice wants to talk with this microservice, the chain of communication would be from the microservice to the proxy, from the proxy to the other proxy, and from the proxy back to the microservice. This has been a well-adopted architecture um, in the ecosystem and as, as a battle-proof technology, let's say. Most well-known implementations on this architecture are of course Linkerd2, Istio, Kumar, or Console Connect, just to name the biggest ones. However, recently in the ecosystem, there has been questioning around whether the sidecar approach is still a viable option or not. I just show you a quick quote from Darren Shepard, who's working for Rancher, as you probably all know. He's questioning whether the sidecar approach might be falling apart in cases like upgrading. And if maybe there might be better alternatives to this approach, meaning the original one per node approach, that is just another architecture we will now take a quick look at. In the per node proxy architecture, things doesn't look so different at the beginning. But if we look a little closer, we will see a couple of differences. At first, no matter how many microservices are deployed on a certain node, on the node there will only be one proxy. So it will, it will just have one per node, as, as I just said. Also, these proxies are not auto-injected by the controller, but are usually deployed in a, in a different manner. On this example, for the advantages, we can reuse Kubernetes internals for many of the things. Deploying can be as simple as a daemon set, so there is no controller magic required. Also, we can reuse things like service, to service topology or core DNS to make sure the communication flow the right way and also don't have to mess with the complexity of, for example, rewriting IP tables because core DNS does the job. Um, this is all resulting in less overhead, which of course means less resources uh, used, um, faster startup times and things like that, which on its own and in having this architecture uh, being less expensive than having the sidecar approach. However, be aware, uh, sir, uh, first, this is currently implemented in Mesh, the, uh, the service Mesh we at Continuous uh, released last year. But be aware, Sidecar has, um, offers tighter integration. So for example, MTLS from pod to pod is possible. Also, egress policies are well possible because IP tables are in place. Also, the um, one per node brings a single point of failure. So there is some risks on this. Additionally, this approach is still kind of novel. So it's not as proved as the well-known sidecar approach. However, we can still improve things like, right? So we could switch from daemon sets to deployments to potentially overcome the single point of failure on the node. Also, we could be working on making the controllers high available, high available but there are still other topics that will also need help. To sum up quick fix, uh, quickly, there are other approaches to the original sidecar approach. Um, they are in their infancy, so there is still work to be done. 
And if you want to help, I guess this states for all service meshes in the industry and also for us, of course, contributors are really very welcome in answering the answers and mastering the challenges I just named. Thank you.